Ah, so after a short break trying to get some things done that were unfortunately higher priority <laughs> than this, uh, I'm back to do a, another video on another new feature in version 4 of Simplify 3D. I hope to be able to crack on now over the next few days and finish off this series so I can move on to other things and get all of the uh, new features that are in version 4 done before version 5 comes out. So let's crack on and get to the desktop to see what new feature we're looking at today. So let's see what Simplify 3D have to say about the smarter breakaway rafts in version 4. So they split into two sections. Uh, on the left side we have the new breakaway raft design. So basically what they're saying is they want to bring the easy removal uh, that they're known for uh, for the support structures to the rafts. So hopefully what we should see in the results of my tests is that it's easier to remove the raft in version 4 than it was in version 3. The other section here is the improved raft construction and uh, what it's saying is that they have increased the speed of raft production by only printing it where it is needed. So we'll take a look at that as well. So I'm going to compare the uh, rafts that we get in or we had in version 3 with version 4 and uh, in order to sort of test this properly, I have downloaded the exact uh, model that they've used here for the carabiner. Um, so we'll be able to compare the two. So let's have a look. Right, I've opened up Simplify 3D. Uh, I've got both version 3.1 something I think running and version 4. And as you can see, I have uh, imported the exact STL that they use on their website, or at least as far as I can tell, it's the exact STL. The link for this model can be found on my website, which is linked below. So let's open up the settings panels for version 3 and version 4 side by side. So on the left side here we have the uh, process settings on the additions tab in version 3 and we have the same tab open on the right hand side for version 4. Now we're going to ignore the skirt and brim and everything else on this tab because they have essentially remained unchanged. Uh, we're only looking at the settings for the rafts. If we go through them from top to bottom from version 3, obviously we can choose a different extruder if we wish or if we have that ability to print the raft. That remains unchanged in version 4. The next option down is the raft layers and that is set by default to 3. If we look at version 4 we can see that it's got a bit of a, a name change. It's raft top layers. Uh, but it still defaults to 3 and these essentially mean the same thing. The reason for the uh, name change will become apparent in a moment. So the next option we had down in version 3 was the raft offset from part and uh, that defaults to 3mm. If we go over to version 4 the next one down after the uh, raft top layers is the raft base layers and this is our first sort of major change in the rafts in version 4. As you can see, you can now specify the number of base layers um, and it is by default set to 2. Whereas in version 3, we didn't have that option. We had the option of disabling them. So it would essentially be the same as setting this to 0 if you didn't want any raft base layers. But now we have the option of setting it to, well, 0 if you don't want any or any others, depending on you know how solid you need your raft to be. So the next option down in version 4 is the same as this one and it uh, defaults to the same and that's the offset. The separation distance is also the same in version 3 and version 4 and also defaults to the same of 0.14. The next option down in version 3 is the raft infill and that defaults to 85%. In version 4 you can see they've given it a slight name change to the raft top infill to distinguish between the base layers. Uh, as you can now set base layers and top layers separately. These are the reasons for the name changes. They really refer to the same actual uh, part of the print. As you can see, they have upped the uh, default uh, infill to 100% in version 4. And they've also added an additional setting in version 4 called above raft speed. By default, it is set to 30%. And what this allows you to do is to control what would otherwise, if you didn't have a raft, be your first layer. So you can slow down or speed up the first actual layer of your print by using this setting. So those are the differences between version 3 and version 4 on the settings. 
um, let's leave them all at the defaults and have a look what this looks like in the preview. So here we are in the uh, print preview with all of the default settings for the rafts in both cases. We've got version 3 on the left side here and version 4 on the right side. Ignoring the difference in the print themselves because that's not what we're looking at here, we can see straight off the bat there are some major changes. First of all, and this kind of speaks to the second item on their website, uh, the reason why it's increased the print times dramatically is that, uh, well, like they said, it's only printing the raft where it's needed. So you can see in version 3, it basically did a raft for the whole outer perimeter of the part, whereas in version 4, it is hollowed out the areas where it's decided it is not needed. Um, and that basically will be based on the width of your raft you specify in the settings. So let's get rid of the part for now and start out at the first or rather the last layer of the raft. So these are purely just the rafts. Now ignoring this massive hole here, which is an obvious difference and we've just discussed. The other differences are that in version four, you can see that what we're now calling the top layers of the raft extend all the way out to the edges of the base layers of the raft. Whereas in version three, you can see that it did the base layers and it's done two, which is non-settable in version three. We can set that in version four, but by default it's two as well. So essentially the number of layers or base layers is the same uh, by default. Um, but you can see that in version three, the actual solid or top layers of the raft only cover a certain percentage of the base layers. I'm not entirely sure why that's the case. And I can presume the reason why they've done this is because in the past, this could have proved troublesome when removing the rafts, uh, where you get your finger on this area here, and this pulls away from the raft top layers rather than pulling the whole raft away from the part. By extending it out to the edge, you're grabbing the whole raft and uh, pulling it off more easily. So let's go down and have a look at the actual base layers. And as you can see, the overall pattern of the base layers remains more or less exactly the same, with the exception, obviously, of the hollowed out areas. If we step up through both of them at the same time, we can see that version 3 prints an additional base layer, essentially with a posing pattern. And uh, then it will go in and do our three raft layers that we defined in settings. So there's one, two, three, and then it will start printing the part. In version four, it goes straight from the base layers into the solid top raft layers, and we should have three of those, and then it will start building the print. So let's have a look to see what we can adjust in the settings now to make some changes. So here we are back in version four's process settings window and in the additions tab. So we've discussed all of this, and essentially the only real new thing here is the ability to be able to set the number of base layers and to change the speed of the first layer above the raft. Now I don't really see anything here or in the print preview that obviously kind of benefits removal from the print itself other than the fact that you can probably experiment around with this print speed here which of course will affect the adhesion between the raft and the first layer. So the only other changes I see is that in version 4, the top layers of the raft extend all the way out to the extremes of the base layers. And also, um, as advertised, it sort of removes areas of the raft it decides it doesn't need, which will, of course, uh, reduce filament and should reduce print times also. So let's print this same carabiner part in version 3 and version 4. I'm going to use the default settings as I don't think anything else is really going to make a whole lot of difference um, apart from possibly this raft speed, which will just take some experimentation. So let's print them out and uh, have a look at them. So that's the two of them uh, printed out and uh, as you can have seen maybe just about the uh, version 3 version hmm, no the uh, <laughs> the print that was done from version 3 printed out in 32 minutes and 7 seconds and the one from version 4 printed out in 20 mi 29 
minutes and 15 seconds, which uh, is an improvement uh, in version 4 of uh, 9%. Obviously, that is kind of, well, you know, it's going to change wildly depending on the part that you print. The point is that it is saving time, which is always good, and it is saving filament, which is always good. Now, I printed these parts out, as I said, it's the Carabiner. Uh, I found it on Thingiverse. You can find the link um, on the website, which is linked below in the description. Um, it appears to me to be exactly the same part that they have on, uh, or Simplify 3D have on their website. Um, I printed it pretty much uh, exactly the same in version 3 and version 4. The only difference between this and the original part is I only printed these at 60% in size. The rest remains exactly the same and the settings, apart from RAF settings, are as close as they possibly can be between version 3 and version 4. So um, aside of the time stroke filament saving thing which we've covered, um, let's have a look to see how easy it was to get the rafts off of these. So starting with the one that was done from version 3 of Simplify 3D, I'm going to say right off the bat that parts of this I'm going to speed up, which probably tells you a lot already up front about uh, uh, how interesting it was to get this raft off in version 3. The first thing you can see is around the edges of the raft, as mentioned during the print preview, is that the top layers of the raft don't extend all the way out to the base layers. There is a kind of, not entirely sure why, but there is a sort of um, overlap on the base layers. And uh, this did translate through to sort of the raft when you're trying to remove it from the path part, separating between the base layers and the top layers. And uh, in many cases, it sort of separated in ways that it just left little sort of strands of filament stuck quite well to the part. Um, yeah, which was a bit of a pain. More than that, uh, certain areas of the raft were, well, they just wouldn't actually break away at all uh, without the fear of breaking the part itself. Um, so I had to use a scalpel to actually get some separation on this and uh, I had to sort of twist it and push it and cut it around so much it actually snapped the scalpel blade. So then I employed a screwdriver to get the rest of it off and uh, it still left, you know, some parts completely bonded between the raft and the part itself. So I had to get the scalpel back and do the best job that I could to cut my fingers off uh, in order to remove the rest of the raft, obviously leaving some scarring on the part itself where there was a complete bond between the two. Finally, after removing all the little bits of the raft and uh, being left with a slight amount of scarring, um, it is time to go round and pick all those bits of plastic off of the floor, ceiling, desk and everywhere else they have pinged. So then moving on to the raft removal for the part printed from version 4 of Simplify 3D. Uh, as you can see, the raft, both top layers and base layers, extend out to the same points. Um, yeah, at this stage I didn't really know if that was just a visual difference. I started to pry it off and bear in mind this is quite a small part so it's not that easy to get your fingers in between it or around it to pull the raft off in a manly way. But one thing that is of note, I won't be speeding this up which probably tells you exactly what you need to know straight away. Now after separating a few areas of the raft, the whole thing just came away in one piece. As you can see uh, there is no scarring left on the uh, bottom of the part whatsoever from the raft and uh, it's quite easy to throw the single raft piece in the bin. And uh, there you go really. I have to say that personally I am quite surprised about the uh, improvement there. I really wasn't expecting a great deal. I mean aside of obviously you know not printing the full um, perimeter on the raft and just putting it where it needed to be. Yeah, that was pretty good. But that raft separation really took me by surprise. Uh, there may be that there was a bit of a luck involved in the extremes of those two particular prints. Uh, I don't know. But uh, if you do print a lot of rafts, uh, which means you spend a lot of time removing rafts, I would say that that feature is worth it all by itself. So as I said at the beginning there, I want to get my videos for the rest of the features in version 4 cracked out over the next few days. So uh, hope to see you for that. Hmm.